All right. Now, uh, we need to, to check. I don't know whether you are seeing my presentation because I need to move to other characteristics like their product structures occur in cones. Uh, they lack flowers and fruits. Uh, somebody is talking. Uh, is just a uh, mute, mute when you are getting in, just mute. So some of them, like I said, they have uh, they don't have fruits, no more flowers. The other issue that you need to mention is that both of them produce uh, male and female gametophytes. Produce both female and male gametophytes. You can put off your videos, uh, Immaculate, put off your video, put off your video, uh, Geoffrey Kibkeroi. You are spending a lot of uh, megabytes. And then, Chelanga uh, Charity, put off your, uh, your, your video. Just cross where there's a video you cross, you just tap there, then it will. Brayton, you have uh, raised your hand. Eh? You want to say something? Hello? Yes. Uh, yes, Brayton. Yeah, we, we can't see your screen. I mean the, yeah. the presentation screen. We are not seeing it. Oh. Uh, this uh, presentation, the one I'm presenting, I'm trying to open it again. Let me see whether, whether you are seeing my presentation. But uh, as I'm going on, just mentioning some of the characteristics, we've said uh, lack flowers, they have narrow little like leaves, they are characterized by naked seeds, the only single fertilization occurs. So we are going to talk about fertilization later, but for now, just yes, know only sing a single you know, kind of uh, single fertilization uh, process occurs in a, in a, you know gymnosperms and this leads to formation of only uh, you know seeds without uh, fruit walls so uh, just want to go to back to my presentation i see whether you are able to see it huh? uh, we were describing so we finished by saying that there are vascular bundles their vascular bundles are how uh, their xylem is only with uh, tracheids, and their phylum uh, cells, of course, have uh, or they lack what you call companion cells. Ponfez, uh, put off your uh, your, your uh, video. Ponfez in Joroge, put off your video. We don't want to see you. We can, uh, yeah, thank you. So, So um, I'm, I'm, uh, I hope now you are seeing my video, sorry, my presentation. Uh, those are the, the pictures that I was uh, using, uh, explaining the, some of the characteristics that we have been mentioning. And uh, I think it's indicated there. And we move to uh, other, other, uh, things, those are some of the characteristics. The leaves, they are narrow like, others are broad, they are more than 100 uh, spe uh, species. In, in those areas, uh, they are conifers, you know, conifers, including pines, of course, the pines, you know, the, the, you know, the red wood, the pine, the uh, crystal cone. And, uh, these are there. The, the, the gymnosperms that we are talking about. So from here, what we're supposed to do now is uh, to check on the classes. And we have uh, around three classes of uh, uh, gymnosperms. And I want to show you some of the classes, the ones I'm talking about. So maybe I share using a, a different, uh, let me share using a different platform because I have I have another platform here where I can use. Uh, you can see my notes there. Mm, so well, that's exactly what I was talking about. And then, so we have explained some of the general characteristics. They are appearing on the wall. 
uh, if I decrease the, the fourth, you'll be able to see clearly what I mean. We have given those examples, characteristics one up to eight, and uh, those are very key uh, characteristics when you are talking about gymnosperms. So as you move uh, downwards, you can see some of the fruits, uh, sorry, the, the gymnosperms that I have put there. And uh, you look carefully, you can see there are no, no fruits, just cones. Uh, so you see plants that are this way, you to... to... If somebody is uh, playing guitar there, I'm going to remove it. No? <laughs> yes, please. Now it's okay. We go back. We have given you examples. They are... So we are saying we are moving to classes of uh, gymnosperms. One of the classes uh, very well uh, elaborated is the conifero epsida, pinopsida. Those are conifers or pines. Then we have psycho, psychodopsida, cycads, and then we ginkgos, which appear in the ginkgopsida uh, classes of gymnosperms. Uh, so inform members, thanks Kenneth for informing members to mute their mic uh, whenever they get into uh, the class. Then uh, we, we need to work on the gymnosperm, life sperm, life cycle, sorry. Then uh, what, what is important in the life cycle is uh, you need to establish where the mature sporophyte starts. For example, if you look at that uh, pine life cycle, we have a mature sporophyte. They tree itself as a mature sporophyte, then uh, which produces two types of uh, gametes, two different types of cones uh, that are produced on the tree. So we have, uh, if you look carefully there, on the diagram, we have what we call a staminate corn and we have an ovulate corn. So male and female corns, which are known as a strob strobelli, uh, of course, I'm going to give you some notes to so check on the, what, what I mean by strobili, is a male and female corn. They are born on the separate branches of the same, same plants. So these mature plants that I'm showing here, uh, sometimes separate branches have male and some, sometimes here you get a female. So they are born on separate branches and because uh, the, uh, the plant is a monoecious kind of, uh, you know, plant, uh, so it has both the male and female cones separate in separate branches. The male cones are very small. Uh, I took photos, but uh, I'm not able to attach them somewhere. But once you are in the lab, you will be able to recognize the male cones, very small, and they are in the form of clusters, and they are around the abical cord, uh, bud of the of, of the stem. Then uh, we have the the other characteristic that we need to talk about the staminate cone. You can see there they are small. This photo here is uh, displaying. You see where I'm moving my cursor. It is displaying as as small compared to this one. The ovulate corn. Ovulate corn is a big pig uh, compared to this one, of uh, the, the male ones. So the other issue that we need to mention is that male corns released, they are released, or they release, you know, large number of uh, what you call microspores, uh, or the pollen grains. Uh. So they release large numbers of pollen grains during the reproductive season, and then die. So their work is just to release the pollen grains and of course, during their productive season and they die. And so female cones develop on lateral buds. Uh, you see the, the one I've, I'm, I've shown there, lateral and apical. The apical bud of the staminate, if you look at it, it's apical. Uh, the, you know, the, it, it, the way it, 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 it's indicated there, just at the end of the, actually at the top of the bud, compared with the ovulate, uh, ovulate corn, which is uh, situated or develops on lateral buds of, on, on young stems. So that's a difference compared to male corns. So if you, you are given uh, uh, something in the laboratory to detect which is an ovulate, 
which one is a staminate. One of them develops in the apical cord, sorry, apical buds, then the other one on the lateral bud. So then uh, what we need to mention is that the female cones form ovules, of course, with an embryo sac. So it contains female gametes, or what you call megaspores, or eggs. So eggs are contained in the female cones. Then uh, the ovule, of course, uh, the female uh, cones form ovules. So these ovules have an opening called micropyle. So this micropyle, after the transfer of pollen grain by wind to a female cone. So the most important thing that we need to mention when we are talking about life cycle of a female cone is that you know it is the, the pollen grain transfers it you know it is transferred from the staminate cone to the ovulate cone by wind. After transfer of pollen grain by wind, so wind is important uh, compared to other uh, divisions of plants that we have mentioned where water is needed. So the pollen grain enters the ovule via that uh, opening, which is called a micropyle. Then now the pollen grain germinates a pollen tube downward. And uh, of course, it, the pollen grain nucleus divides into to, to produce two male gametes. And of course, by uh, um, uh, a process known as uh, uh, meiosis, you are able to get the two gametes. So the male gametes pass actually into the uh, pollen tube, which grows then uh, towards the female gametes inside the ovule. And now, fertilization of the cow producing. Okay, put off your. Is it right? Mute. That as you can mute and remove your video. Yes. So, and one was the wrong. All right, all right. So, so then we have what we call uh, one egg that develops into an endosperm without fertilization. One mill gamut. Fertilize the female gamut for using what we call as porpoise. There's uh, somebody making noise, huh? I don't know. So we have we have said that uh, the two male gametes produced by the pollen tube, one of them fertilizes the female gametes, which is in the ovule, to form a sporophyte, then one egg develops into what we call uh, an endosperm. So without actually being fertilized. So the diploid zygote develops into an embryo. So you can see there on the video, uh, there's a, a zygote developing into uh, an embryo. I've indicated there. Then what happens? I'm just expanding this one. I hope it's expanded. So the diploid zygote I'm having a class, just walk out. So the diploid dip, zygote develops into an embryo. And the embryo together with a small food is then released into, you know, released as a small winged, winged seed. Eh? So when you are walking around, next time when you are meeting, please bring these uh, small winged seeds that are displaying here. Uh, there is a small winged seed that has an embryo there. So winged seed, actually, if they land on a conducive environment, they germinate. They germinate into a young sporophyte pine tree. So when landing into, uh, you know, on a conducive environment, they germinate into a young sporophyte tree. And that's the one that I've, I've actually displayed there. There's a young sporophyte tree that has germinated. So ideally, I've used another diagram to express what I, uh, I mean. You can see there, we have an immature cone, adult uh, sporophyte, then they produce uh, meiosis, through meiosis, megaspore, microspores, or pollen, the pollen grain. Then down there, there's a zygote, there's a pine wing seed, a young sporophyte, 
and this this production of uh, so sorry there is a development of young sporophyte so we'll you'll be able to differentiate the two the 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 the, the life cycle of a uh, uh, sperm compared to the life cycle of a pteridophyte when we say, you remember as we talking about the both alas then uh, we talked about other other things in the uh, in the uh, in the pteridophyte so be careful when you you want to differentiate the two. So before we wind up on uh, gymnosperms, we need to talk about their economic importance. One of the things that I found out when I was doing my research here is that uh, they are very important uh, kind you know group of plants, and I've displayed there, starting number one there. There are some plants known as Cycas revoluta. You know they have starch as food. And such, they can, their, their storage organs can be used as food. We have pinus, the radiana there, roasted seed, and they used as food. You can see resin, it's quoted from Abias Palsamia, it's a mountain medium on a permanent slide preparation in the lab. We have others like a treatment of asthma, whereby pina, you know, pinus. And we, Geradiana, we have to, all these plant examples producing these products, rosin and ephedrine. So then we have more others like uh, good bulbs, products, whole plants for ornamentals. And you can see they are very good examples uh, in the perf perfume industry where they produce oil like cedrus. So these are some of the economic importance of gymnosperms. But, uh, we you can also mention many others like uh, fuel majority of gymnosperms can be used as either good fuel or a, you know form of charcoal of course uh, you know the cypress then uh, we have timber cypress and uh, pine and then uh, you have pulp of course we talked about pulp we may make uh, pencil brands uh, like the juniperas, mounting media, we talked about it, and give you an example, and the pine oil. So all these are some of the economic importances of uh, gymnosperms. And we are giving examples like juniperas, posira, uh, bodocarpas. They are very good in treating uh, intestinal worms, but also trans st stomach. Then we have uh, ornamentals like cycads, Cypress, we have ornamental cypress, popularly grown everywhere. And I'm going to show some of the photos when you know on the platform. Uh, others include fibers, others include fibers, sawdust. So, uh, some of the good chippies eh, we have talked about from my uh, trees. Eh. Give me uh, can we... So, uh, so that's what I'm, 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 I've informed you. So, but remember, I always give you an assignment of working on the ecological importances of uh, uh, you know gymnosperms after describing their uh, you know characteristics and also examples remember to rem to always quote examples when you are mentioning some of these uh, important class of uh, uh, you know divisions of, of, of uh, division of a plant so uh, that's what you call uh, gymnosperms and there are classes that you can just check Confirm there are many pines around. There are so many cedars in uh, this narrow county. So you can actually go through them and uh, appreciate the, the life cycle. And the key areas in the life cycle we have mentioned that they, they have male and female cones on separate plants. Then the ovulate cone, the staminate cone, they are the strawberry uh, bili. Then they are forming uh, what you call an egg. Uh, and then the other one forms a pollen grain. They form a zygote. 
the zygote develops into an embryo of a young winged seed. So the young winged seed is thrown away by wind. It develops into a young sporophyte after feeding, you know, landing in a conducive environment. So you should be able to differentiate this cycle from the, whatever we did uh, in the, uh, you remember we, we worked on a fan, a very good example of a fan. And then we, we said some of the teridophytes, how they are moving, the life cycle, what, is, what are the differences? Because we are moving from the mosses, liverworts, and ferns. The, the, the fern, uh, the life cycle of a fern, you remember we said the sporophyte, then there is a group of sporangium uh, or a sporangia that uh, form spores. The spores actually germinate, what we call a protonema. Uh, then uh, from the protonema, we have what we call a uh, a prothallus, of course, the prothallus releases the archegonia and arthridia. So the two meet and fertilize uh, through, uh, you know, arthridia producing sperms that move to archegonia by swimming through water. So you understand what I'm saying now. This one is a pollen grain moving to the ovule by wind, but this one in the you know the life cycle of a fan it involves uh, sperms swimming to the echinacea part uh, by by water and by uh, you know a, a chemical signal secreted from the echinacea uh, you know that directs the sperm directly to where it is and then it fertilizes to form a young sporophyte and the gametophyte dies eh? and uh, it's uh, short lived so there are some similarities like the sporophyte is dominant in ferns it's also very, very dominant in, in uh, pine or it's in gymnosperms. palms. So those similarities, you should be able to, uh, you know, uh, be able to get them properly. The differences between two, the two life cycles so that you are able to get the, 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 the difference or the evolution part where now these seedless vascular plants move to seed plants, but now without the fruit wall. So, and also, you should be able to know the examples: Austell, spike mosses in the, you know, in the teridophytes, and compare them with the uh, pines around, the conifers and the ginkgo cedars of, uh, of the, you know, classes of gymnosperms. So I think you should be able to know those differences in case you are asked to compare the two, and also check the similarities and differences and you explain the evolutionary tree, evolutionary history of plants. Uh, from there, uh, we are going to, I think we mentioned, uh, so we have mentioned about the economic importance and by mentioning specific uh, plants and how important they are. And you can see they have put uh, ornamental plants. Uh, there's an ornamental plant there. They are for uh, the others for respiratory uh, problems. Then uh, there are some for turpentine. I can see, you know, you know, it's used as a solvent in paint. Others are used in good bulb industry, and uh, areas just trimming around the, the the fence. They can make very good edges. Example is a cypress, and most of you are familiar with that. So today. I don't want to take much time because I, I know uh, you're using your bundles, but uh, I expect you maybe to, tomorrow I'm going to put some something online. And the, uh, the attendance is only 30. I don't want to get more, more than uh, one hour from what we started is almost 55 minutes after three. But uh, just know that uh, the gymnosperms are naked they exhibit single fertilization. So the single fertilization that we are talking about there is that one male gamete fertilizes the female and the female gamete producing the zygote. Then just only one male gamete that fertilizes the female to form you know, the, the zygote. But uh, in case of uh, angiosperms, I'm going to demonstrate to you that the double fertilization we are talking about that will result into a fruit wall 
and then uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, move forward. So for an introduction in the Angus Park before I close, is that uh, these are flowering plants. You can see them uh, from uh, my, my, my photo there. So anything flowering is an angiosperm. It can never be a gymnosperm because gymnosperms lack flowers and fruits. So whenever you're walking along the corridors, please just identify some of the uh, angiosperms that are within the compound. There are so many angiosperms around uh, you know, the university and any places you are you're visiting and you're eating some of the angiosperms every day but people don't want to appreciate them because maybe they don't know what what, what those uh, are. But uh, it's important to appreciate them by, you know, knowing what your angiosperms are, and and you'll be able maybe to make some uh, contribution to science by doing some research in future, or uh, you know whatever you be able to engage in in future. So. The most successful group of plants on Earth currently are success are palms, and they are so so uh, you know widespread that they are all over. If you talk about uh, maize beans, you are told uh, anybody in the world can recognize what a maize is, what a bean is. It, you know you don't need time to explain to someone. So if any is not taking them is feeding them to a cow or some cattle is, is, is giving it to some uh, kind of animal so they are plants that produce flowers and bear their seeds in fruits so we say they are so rampant they are most diverse and they, in fact in other books they mention of uh, over 300,000 species that's a big number and those are the known species that means you scientists uh, young people like you will be able to uh, you know, uh, you discover more. You go to uh, places where we haven't uh, documented. You document the the angiosperms. So there are over three hundred thousand species uh, of angiosperms, and uh, they are scattered all over. So they exhibit what you call, uh, uh, you know, um, double fertilization. I'm going to explain the, that. They are fruit producing plants. So any plant that produces fruit is most likely it is an angiosperm. So they produce fruit. So their seeds are enclosed uh, by the fruit wall. So that's the main, main big difference between the, them and angiosperms. So angiosperm, remember we said, they lack flowers and fruit. But these ones have fruits. They are enclosed. They are fruit producing. The acids are, have a fruit wall. So they, that means they do what you call a double, double fertilization, sorry. So double fertilization. So their classes involve actually, uh, there are two types of classes. And uh, we have monocots and dicots, or dicotyledonae and uh, monocotyledonae. So all those, uh, those are the two main classes. The, some of the examples of these plants include, of course, trees such as mango, banana, you've eaten apples, oranges, and many more. Tomatoes, you've taken eggplants, pepper, uh, you know, grass family like, you know, the maize, wheat, sugarcane, you've eaten rice. These are categorized as angiosperms. So uh, whenever you, that means that every day at least you are taking an angiosperm. That's how important, uh, uh, you know, uh, angiosperms are uh, in this world. Because at one time or at one moment you are under the shade of an angiosperm, or uh, you are taking it as food, or you are using it, uh, you are using some product. So it's a very very uh, diverse plant, uh, you know, all over. And uh, we said they are grouped in, they are of two types of uh, classes, monocots and dicots. And uh, dicots, that means they have two cotyledons. That's why it's di, dicot. And uh, of course, uh, the monocots, they have only one cotyledon. 
and uh, you see you see some of the photos that are put on the on the on the presentation slide once it's uh, it's, it's it's uploaded so we have so several examples they have put uh, the differences of the two main classes dicots their flowers of course are arranged in groups of four the leaves are broad with their network venation if you look at their beam the leaf of a bean is very broad compared to the maize. Then uh, you can see some of the examples. Uh, they are insect pollinated, very important. And they have a taproot system. So all those characteristics, including presence of vascular campium, are uh, important in uh, characterizing the, the dicots. Then when you look at the monocots there, they are, have what you call one cotyledon. They are narrow leaves. You're looking at a maze when you are talking about this, so that is easier. Their stem is scattered with vascular bundles. Of course, they are uh, often wind pollinated. Remember, when we talked about uh, gymnosperms, gymnosperms are only pollinated, pollinated by wind. Because they lack flowers, these ones have an advantage. And you can see the difference why angiosperms are better treated compared to uh, you know, gymnosperms. Because these ones, they are wind pollinated, their root systems are different. You see there is a vibrous root system here. Then uh, the other one is a tap root. So all these make uh, you know, angiosperms very successful on earth, uh, you know, kind of group of uh, plants. Then you look at the, some of the differences there, the monocot and dicot. I put a, a diagram to show some of the differences. And they, you can see there, the single is for monocot. Then uh, you have a two cotyledon. They are broad there. Then the vascular bundles we are talking about, you see there, they are scattered. The vascular bundles meaning, you know, the xylem and the phylum tissues, they are scattered all over. Then uh, you see this one for marine, uh, the dicots, the, the kind of form a ring there at the center. Then uh, the floral parts, see down there, they are floral parts. I don't know whether they are visible, but you can see there, they are, they are good, uh, you know, floral parts there. Fours and these ones are in threes. So these are some of the very important characteristics of two groups of uh, uh, angiosperms that we are very interested in as scientists and they're very important to us, uh, uh, either scientists or uh, human beings, uh, whichever profession you are in. So when, when, uh, when uh, next time when we meet, uh, we'll be talking about the life cycle of an angiosperm, then, so make sure you, 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 you go through what I've, I've, I've put you there, I've put on the platform, during your free time, and then I'll put tomorrow, I'll put some uh, questions there for somebody to attempt, like the one this week. Uh, people are joining right now, but they're very late, but they'll get this clip on the, on the platform, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, uh, so that you can download this video and go through what you have studied. So next time we are going to talk about this life cycle of an angiosperm, look at it, the most important thing here is the flower. And you know this part of the flower is what is missing in other life cycles of uh, other plants. Look at how our flower is so adapted to the environment that it forms all these. And we are able to fertilize, form a seed. The seed is transferred to some place by either insects, animals, even wind, some water can it floats on water. So the dispersal mechanism of angiosperm is so good that it has so many, many uh, ways of being dispersed. The other issue is that it can lie dormant for many years just to uh, you know, wait to, to, to germinate. So then we have some economic hypothesis of angiosperm. You're going to look at, the, at, at them later after finishing. So whenever you're going to look at the notes, just go through that. And we mentioned, we start with the life cycle of angiosperms when we get back next week. And uh, those who are not here, 
I can see around, uh, is it uh, around 35 people try to, you know, access the platform. I'm happy about that, but uh, I, we need to increase more numbers so that uh, sometimes it's good to go online to check whether students are ready for client blended learning. So I'll put some of the questions on the platform as usual uh, by tomorrow morning. Then you'll be able to go through them on gymnos farms only. I see whether you have understood the kind of uh, uh, things that we have discussed today. So I'm picking some of the questions if you have uh, any questions or you can use in my chat box. I see, uh, yeah, I, I don't see any questions on the chat box. Uh, but people are joining in late. So Brighton, uh, are you there? Collins, did you manage to get in? I have not seen Collins, but Brighton was there. So please visit the platform. Uh, today, today I've just, uh, I want to show you whether you visit the platform as usual and you'll be able to get the notes. And uh, then uh, even including this uh, uh, class today, there will be a video there uploaded for those who missed. Please assist, share it with other people. Uh, the recorded version of the class will be available on the platform today evening. So you can share and I'll send you the, the password for the access of the recorded transcript. So don't worry for those who missed, please share. Those who have enough bundles, you walk around. You, try, you download the transcript, then let those who missed listen. That's a good method of avoiding, you know, issue, you know, problems, especially for those who missed or did not have a smartphone. So I take this opportunity to thank all those who, are, who have attended, but I'll make sure in, on Friday, if we have a chance, we can meet face to face. I'll talk to Brighton and Collins. We agree on when to meet on Friday so that we face face to face meet, then uh, move forward. And I agree when to have a cut. Unless somebody has a question, I need just to end there and uh, wish you a good evening and uh, continue study. Thank you. Unless somebody has a question. All right. Nobody. Have a good evening. Uh, have a good evening to Come on.
and I the explosive device in the face of his skull. Good job. We are black. Cops unit, meaning nothing. Ah! Mokamba Namazeni Namazeni Glass <laughs> 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 Wewe Bernard. Wewe oh, unakoja nini hapa?